Hey everybody, it's me, John Anthony Chihak Soltero, back from Phoenix Fan Fusion 2022. It's been six years since I've been to a Phoenix convention, fan fest, fan fusion, what have you. Um, this all started in 2019, right after Tucson Comic Con. Uh, I sent uh, an inquiry to Phoenix Fan Fusion asking if uh, they'd be interested in having me as a guest. I thought, you know, you've, you've now been a guest at Tucson Comic Con. What can it hurt, right, you know, to try? They got back to me so quick, like within two days, um, and told me, yeah, we'd love to have you as a guest. Um, and so that was set to be 2020. And of course, the world changed um, a few short months later, and um, two years later, here we are. Um, but during that time, that also allowed me to put out issues three, four, and five of the Bubba Patrol. So I had the entire story to share with people. And I'm, I'm going to go into that a little bit. Um, was very optimistic, but I was also, of course, a little bit nervous. Um, didn't know what people would think. I was hoping they were going to be all on board and super stoked. Um, and so I did some extra things like offering if you got all the books together, I would throw in a rebark on the cover. And I had little COAs made up, so you'd automatically get a COA with that. You um, would then automatically also get to pick up a print, any one of the Bubble Patrol prints. And um, the, the show was an overwhelming success. Um, it was a little strange, actually, because Friday got there a little bit late, but, you know, no issues. Um, so I get there, set up. Had a couple of sales that day, including my first commission, uh, but the guy didn't have a picture of his grandkids' dog. So he had an event pass, so he was coming back, and he came back Saturday so he could give me, you know, show me the picture, and um, was able to crank that out for him, and uh, then sold, I think, four original sketch covers that were already in my box and sold numerous um, full sets. Uh, there were some people who remembered me, like a mom and daughter who remembered me from Tucson Con and the daughter was really excited. And then there were some other kids, um, a mom and daughter, another mom and daughter, different set, like the daughter was super excited. They didn't actually end up coming back, but she was super, super excited. And she really wanted the books, but they had just gotten there. And mom said, of course, we got to we gotta walk around, but like, you know, we definitely going to come back. So you want to see everything. And I told her, I was just like, yeah, they're going to be here. We'll be fine. So hopefully they'll be there at Tucson Comic Con or at the Drawn to Comics event uh, this next month. Um, but I feel really, really, uh, um, I'm super, <laughs> super exhausted um, so excuse my rambling, but I feel really overwhelmed with how everything went, you know, in, in a good way. Like, um, you know, you can, I, I, I can always want more and, and hope that it would have done even better, but that's to come. And that's with building a presence in the Bubba Patrol. This is the first time it's ever been to Phoenix Fan Fusion. So <clears throat> that's, this was a huge response being a guest and you know having promos and being in the in the you know, program guide and being able to uh, feel really important you know I, I know sometimes that matters to people sometimes it doesn't but <clears throat> having the the digital promo piece that people could see and they could share on social media um, really meant a lot to me and so I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out, um, being able to do a commission for somebody, being able to do several rebarks 
for people uh, going through uh, about a quarter of my COAs. Um, and, you know, just seeing the reaction of people, like when they saw the artwork and they were like, oh my God, this is so cute. And then you tell them the story. And it just gets them right here kind of thing. It, it means a whole lot. And it makes me very, very happy. Um, there were couples, there were, and, and that's the thing that I keep telling people. People are like, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a great book for kids. Yeah, it is a great book for kids, but it is not a kid's book. The vast majority of the people who bought this book were not children. Um, so <laughs> we're not accompanied to the table by a child. So uh, it, it, was, it was pretty awesome um, to, to have that experience. Um, I also, one of my last sales, or maybe it was my last sale, was a guy who came up two different times. Uh, the first time he was looking through books, like the Bubba Patrol, and I was telling him about it. And then he was also looking at original sketch covers. And he wanted to get them graded. And I was just like, okay, um, but I don't know how that works officially. And so he ran over to get somebody who's a CGC affiliate and they came over with him and then just physically handed him the books. And they're like, as long as they're in your hands, we're, you know, we know that they're yours. And I'm like, okay, that, that was pretty simple. So this guy's going to get some of my sketch covers graded and there'll be a gold label on them, you know, because they're verified, which is pretty sweet. Right. Um, and, and I'm also going to talk to CBCS about becoming, like, setting up an artist account so that I can submit, like, my books and they can verify signatures and things like that. So I'm pretty excited about that as well. I didn't submit any books for grading. I was planning to, but uh, a lot of the books I wanted to submit were, um, had signature verification, and that was going to be pretty costly. Um, so I just wanted to have a lot of fun. Uh, and believe me, I did. Um, I, uh, I, I did not take any books with me to get signed. I have every intention of doing so, and I failed. However, um, and I don't know if this is going to show up very well, but this is the 2019 Challenge Coin from the Hero Initiative, and they were like one section over from me, and I got to talk to the guy, and you know, just I, I know he's not the Hero Initiative, but he's one of the people who's a representative, and you know, he's uh, a volunteer or an ambassador. I'm not sure what the correct term is, but he, uh, you know, I thanked him, and I just said, you know, I'm really grateful that they were able to get that Justice League versus the Avengers. Uh, special hardcover out in time for George Perez, you know, because I believe in what they do with helping creators because these individuals are independent contractors and it's not just like the pencilers and inkers and writers that you're thinking of, it's just like, you know, like letters and colorists and story editors and stuff like that, people who are contracted who don't have healthcare benefits or might run into an issue financially where they can't you know, afford to pay that stuff because maybe they're not working or they've got sick. I mean, it's the same thing with anybody else, but, you know, there are different programs that are around to help people who might lose a job. But, you know, how do we make sure that these individuals are taken care of? And one of those ways is by producing things like challenge coins and having artists do coasters and, uh, you know, the, the 100 project and submitting specific editions of their books to be Hero Initiative books. And that's a huge thing. And I got to do my first coaster and I, I chose Bane because um, I was just like, who do I draw? Who do I draw? And I, I left it there and I like walked around for a little bit because it was, you know, beginning of Saturday and I wanted to get like a thought process on things. And I'm like, well, you've got your Bane beanie. Bane is one of your favorite villains and one of your favorite characters of all time. And he's, you know, he's strong and he's smart and capable. So it was just like, let's do a Bane. And I did, and I turned it in. And um, so coasters, when you go to the Hero Initiative booth, 
Like they have black and white coasters that are just done pen and ink. And those are $20. Like you, you pick a coaster, you donate, you're not buying these things. You're donating to the hero initiative. So you donate $20, you get a black and white coaster. Uh, if, if you want a color coaster, that's colored with marker, pen, paint, what have you, you give them $30. And that goes to help individuals who greatly need it in this industry, um, who maybe are forgotten by the industry. You know, maybe there's somebody who haven't worked in years and, you know, they've been struggling to get by and like, there's a lot of that going on in this world right now. And we're becoming more aware of it. And I believe in putting my money where my mouth is. And I believe in putting, you know, my belief structure out there. And if I'm independent and I expect people or hope that people will acknowledge me and, and, you know, pay for my stuff and, purchase things and respect me, then I have to do that same thing to, for the men and women who have come before me in this industry. And I have to do that for other independent creators. Like I'm fortunate enough to have a full-time job that has benefits and, you know, a 401k and everything, but, and this is something I do for fun on the side, but it's also me learning business and, and reaching out and branching out to other people and stuff like that. And that really happened uh, this time around. I, I sat at the same island with, um, right next to me was Latik Curry. And on the other side of Latik was uh, Eric Adiaga, who I've known since 2009, because we sat next to each other at Phoenix Comic Con when it was at the Mesa Convention Center uh, back then. And then, um, what was it? Um, I'd met him, you know, very, very briefly in 2008 at my first uh, Phoenix Comic Con. And, you know, talked to each other and stuff like that, uh, social media and stuff like that ever since then. Um, but six years is a long time to go without seeing people and talking to people and stuff like that at, at a convention this size. So it was good to see him again. Um, I got to meet uh, Mog Park and Mel, her husband, and agent uh and another friend on vu for the very first time in person like talk to them over social media i've uh, they invited me to be part of 101 tales or 101 tales uh at the end of 2020 and i was very grateful to be a part of that and have people get to hear the story of the bubba patrol and you know my work and things like that and just my health history and why that's propelled me to want to do this. Um, so getting to meet them in person and hug on who's so cute. And I, I don't mean that in anything less than the absolute best way. She was so excited to be there and be a part of this. And like, there was a video of Mel picking her up from the airport and her just like, geeking out so hardcore she was so excited to be a part of it it was very childlike in her wonderment and that's what i love about this because like an adult can be that excited about it and like look at me now i'm exhausted i'm tired like i want to go to bed but i have like i can't shut up so i got to meet on and i got to meet mog and mel and I got to be a part of the Hero Initiative, which is a big thing for me. And I got to um, meet uh, Philip Russert, who does a book called Tragedy, and um, had me on his, it was like, it, it was a, a Q&A &A, um, creator corner um, that he was doing a podcast with for a while. And he still does here and there. Um, so I got to meet some people that I've known through social media and then meet new people for the first time in person like Latique and uh, just his entire crew was, was awesome. I also uh, got to not so much meet, but re-meet uh, Dave Beatty, Dave Beatty. Uh, and I was talking to him and um, he does like, not only does he do, you know, comics and he's worked for Marvel and DC and stuff like that, but he also does like a lot of printing and uh, print media and stuff like that. And so right next to him was the Janimal, 
and they worked on this book together, Dark Me. And it's a, a, a really fun parody book, um, and I'm excited about it um, because there's some, you know, political satire in there and consumer satire and stuff like that. Um, and Dave was really cool, you know, told me a lot about, like, what he does and, and you know, offered advice and tips and stuff like that because he's been in the industry for I, I don't even know how long. Um, but the Janimal was super cool because I got to talk to him for, God, like almost an hour this morning and he's involved in like these uh community library uh public library conventions and uh get togethers and and things to promote like it's a great way to promote literacy and help raise funds for the library but at the same time like a very good way to get your product out and he was looking at the bubble patrol and he was just like this is this is perfect. Like, you know, it promotes reading. It's, you know, it's family friendly, it's kid friendly. So like, this is a really, really good thing. So it made me really excited. And he gave me his card. And he was just like, reach out to me. We'll make sure that you get all the information that you need so you can come and be a part of these things. And Latik, um, my God, like this guy seems too young to, uh, to have done the things that he's done. Um, but he also runs like a draw and chill uh, once a month. And it's like a community event. You can come and you can hang out, and, you know, get your name out, sell your work. Um, and a just super personable guy. And at the end of the show, he was just like, you know, thanked me for my help during the show. I thanked him for his help during the show. Uh, he told me like, you know, hey, if you want to network and, and collab on something like I'm game for that. I'm just like, this is, this is why you do the things that you do. This is how the community is supposed to be. And in some instances, the community is amazingly wonderful like this. They, you know, like if you reach out and you talk to people and you ask questions and you're sincere and you're honest and you're authentic with it, the community is very receptive. And sometimes when you generally need help with something and you reach out to somebody, they're very standoffish they don't want to give away their trade secrets and stuff like that and i'm like look we can both use the same printer and use the same brushes on you know photoshop or clip studio and we're not going to turn out the same work like it's just not going to happen so to know that uh latik uh who does who just they just produced this first issue of fatality um which is I, not based on the manga fate, but he was saying, you know, if you're into that, this is going to relate to you uh, or or resonate to you. And it's uh, very fast paced. It's very graphic in not just like it's it's kind of visceral, but it's very graphic in the art styles, so like very good solid blacks. And uh, there's a lot of... Um, I was actually going to ask him, I was saying, hey, did you do this like digitally or how'd you do this? And he goes, I like to work traditionally, but I've been doing digitally. Drew this entire thing on his cell phone, which is insane to think about, right? Like, yeah, there's some drawing apps and stuff like that on a cell phone, but like who, who draws an entire comic book on their cell phone? Latique Curry. That's who. Totally awesome guy. Like, uh, had... He just had people coming up and like uh, gushing over his prints and he does some really great work and stuff like that. And, and he does really fun stuff, but he is super versatile in his artwork. Like some of it's very cartoony. He can mimic stuff really well, but at the same time, like he can get like, like real life likenesses extremely well. Like he had uh, like a really beautiful uh, print canvas piece of uh, Chadwick Boseman as the Chala. And the likeness was amazing, but it was very, you could tell it was painted. Like it was, like that's the way it looked and it looked great. And then he had um, a Nipsey Hussle piece that was like super photorealistic, but an illustration photorealistic. Um, anyways, you know, gushing about some, some uh, you know, independent creators and I love indie creators. I picked up some original artwork, which I'm super excited about. I'm gonna show you in a second. 
but one of the one of the people who was there was there at the Hero Initiative booth the entire time, and I meant to bring some books to have him sign. But in a way, I'm really glad that I didn't, <clears throat> because um, some of my favorite work that he did is from the uh, early 2000s Teen Titans, and I was able to track a couple of those down. And Mike McCone was at the Hero Initiative booth, and he was doing you know, commissions, and he was selling original art, and he was also uh, autographing. And he was signing, if he got it personalized, which I got mine personalized to John, uh, it was free, but it's the Hero Initiative. So why would you not throw some money in the bucket for that, right? And so he signed both issues 16 and 17. Um, and then the stack of books that I got, you know, just some books here and there, some, you know, some Swamp Thing, New 52, and you know, Bat uh, Superman 10 Cent Adventure, which is some kind of cool stuff for a buck. Um, but I was really glad to find those because that's some of my favorite stuff that he worked on. Um, first stop at Phoenix Fan Fusion had to have been at my favorite uh, DVD dealer, and he's got a ton of Marvel Legends. I think his it's like DVDs and Legends is or Movies and Legends or something like that is is the name of his business, and I completed the saga. Mystery Science Theater, Season 8, Season 9, and Season 10. This was really, like, the only thing that I was, like, that I knew I wanted to get at the show. So that was hilarious. It, like, I'm just like, dude, do you have Mystery Science Theater here? And he's just like, yeah, right here. And they're like, boom, boom, boom. And I was just like, all right, I'll take them. I don't care how much they cost. And they were expensive. But um, you know what? Like, when's the next time I'm going to get a chance to get those? Another year? Maybe? I don't know. Um, so other than the friends and experiences and just memories and stuff that I'm going to have from this, I picked up some cool stuff, um, including some artwork. Love artwork. Need some. It's not like there's not enough artwork up here, but I, I do need to decorate more. There's some walls that could use some more shininess. So I picked up some Akira. I would say these are mini posters, uh, 11 by 17. I love the widescreen aspect of the classic movie poster of Akira. And then I got one, and I want to say it's in Japanese, but I mean, I don't read Japanese, so I can't be 100% sure. So this is like a great like moment from the movie you know and then i was just you know all over akira today you know so <laughs> uh and then got some original original art this today i picked up today from ryan cody this is uh a cover that was unpublished for a pitch uh, for a book that was going to come out called The Atomic Age. And uh, I was talking to Ryan and Ryan told me that um, uh, this was something that he and a writer pitched. And unfortunately it didn't get picked up, but you know, you have to do some artwork and you have to have treatment, stuff like that in order to pitch. So, this is really cool and significant because you're looking at something that is an original piece of art. And some people are like, I only want stuff that's been published or whatever. But this is an unused cover for a pitch that basically like a, a pilot that wasn't picked up. If you're, if you're thinking TV shows. And then um, next to him was Scott Godlewski. Uh, who's an inker, and um, he had a stack, I kid you not, it was this high of pages, 11 by 17 pages, fully inked, that he did. And I was looking through them, and he was selling them super cheap, like 20 bucks. Like, how could you not buy an original page from somebody for $20, right? 
And so, like, obviously, I picked this one because it's got some great, um, great uh, close-ups of this pug. There, there were two pages that I saw that had the pug. One of them had a better front face shot, but this has some really great close-ups of it. And I asked him if he had this particular book, this particular issue, with him because what I like to do is I like to frame the page and put the book next to it. So you get that like, this is, bam, this is where it's from kind of thing. And I did that with uh, a number of the books that I have. So all I've got to do is track down this book. He didn't have any copies of that issue. He had like later issues, which is totally cool, but I, I needed to get that issue. So, um, and then uh, Dave, talking to Dave Beatty, um, a, a woman, a cosplayer, Naomi Moons, uh, was running around the convention on Saturday dressed as Sailor Moon Knight. And uh, Dave's girlfriend came running over and she's this tiny little short woman and she was She-Hulk. And it was awesome. And she runs over with uh, Sailor Moon Knight and Moon Knight with the, 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 like the bird skull. And, um, and he had done that, that print. And so he, she grabbed like two of them and threw them down in front of Dave and he starts signing them and she gives it <clears throat> to Naomi Moons. I believe it's Naomi Moons. Um, and, and, you know, they take the picture and, you know, she runs off and everything. And, um, and he had the second one and he started signing it and he's like, oh, I guess she's gone. And he's just like, do you want to sign print? And he just finished the signing it. And, like, <laughs> and I'm like, that's awesome. And he was dressed like Mr. Knight. Like he had the white suit with like the silken vest. And it was, it was pretty great. And then this is, this is the last thing that I'm going to show that I picked up. Um, for those of you who know me, you know I went to school for animation. Uh, I went to school to become a comic book artist. And very early on in school, uh, one of my instructors said, if you want to do comic books, do animation. Everything in pre-production is comic books. And he was right. So... Next week is my birthday, and there was uh, Animation Legends was there who have uh, tons of cells from like old TV shows and movies and stuff like that. They had like Brave Little Toaster, they had Nemo in Dreamland, uh, they had stuff from Ewoks, Droids, they had stuff from He Man and the Masters of the Universe and Shira. Um, and there was some pretty cool Tila pieces. Uh, Tila. Uh... So the weird thing was, is like some of them were cells that were painted and some of them were the registration papers that they probably used to, you know, paint the cells back then because that was in the 80s and everything. But this was one that came uh, with a background and they did tell me that this background is most likely Xeroxed but I don't really care because it has a background and it gives you the impression of the scene. And it's a show that I don't really remember. I mean, I know it, but I don't remember it for myself because I don't think, I think it might've been in that transition period when I wasn't really watching a lot of cartoons anymore, but it's still huge. And it's this Brave Star cell. And you get two characters in it, plus the character coming in from this side in this cool background. So I've got to um, get this amazing piece uh, framed um, and put up on my wall because I don't collect animation cells, but being that I went to school for animation, had my degree in it, and I love 2D animation, and I love a lot of stuff from the 80s and the 90s, um, this is super special. And I decided to treat myself to it because next week is my birthday. And it's kind of just a way to celebrate everything. Six years and I'm back in Phoenix. And the Bubba Patrol made, made an impact. And I'm really happy about it. And um, 
Agnew has <sighs> Agnew earned this guest badge as much as I do. I want to thank everybody who stopped by, who bought the book, who picked up prints or you know, like loved what was going on. Um, I'm so exhausted right now and I couldn't be happier with just how this weekend turned out. To be able to memorialize my heroes, my dogs in this way and have people respond positively to it and with a lot of enthusiasm in a lot of cases means a whole lot. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, this is a long, long video, and I hope you stuck out, stuck through it to the end. Um, but from Booth 1879, this is John Anthony Chihox Saldana.